So is the RTX 4070 strong enough to do the new RT Overdrive path tracing update for Cyberpunk 2077? On the left-hand side of the screen, you're seeing the RTX 4070 running at 1440p ultra settings, so no ray tracing, but at the native resolution. On the right-hand side, you see the new RT Overdrive update running at native 1440p, and it's in the mid-teens FPS uh, versus averaging you know, in the mid-70s, a lot of times over, especially as we get out into this scene. Now you can also see the image quality differences. The path tracing update certainly has um, better reflections right there in the puddle, more realistic lighting, all of that. Um, also, pay attention to the stats at the bottom left-hand side of each screen where you can see the average PC latency. Uh, normally, as the frame rate goes down, the latency goes up, making it feel worse to play, uh, in addition to the worse choppiness to the image. And that'll be really important as we look at upscaling, because obviously it's looking like RT Overdrive at the native 1440p resolution is not really the experience that we're looking for here. So what we're looking at now is RT Overdrive native on the left-hand side. In the middle, we're seeing RT Overdrive with DLSS super resolution at the quality setting. And on the right-hand side, you're seeing DLSS super resolution quality plus DLSS 3 frame generation. Now, it's important to not just look at the frame rate numbers, but also to look at the average PC latency, once again, on the bottom left-hand side of each screen. If you remember playing the game natively at 1440p Ultra with no uh, RT Overdrive mode, we, the PC latency was usually between 25 to 30 milliseconds. Uh, here, we're seeing that with DLSS quality enabled, it, the game is at least playable over 30 FPS um, most of the time and uh, average PC latency up a little over 50 milliseconds a lot of the time. Notice that frame generation smooths out the image, getting it close to 60 FPS, but the latency is actually worse. So it's actually gonna feel a little bit worse than the 30 FPS to, to play, although it will look a lot smoother. Now, enabling DLSS balanced mode is going to improve frame rates even more and lower the PC latency. So again, on the left is still the native as the comparison point, but in the middle, we're now seeing DLSS balanced, which lowers the internal rendering resolution even further and pushes the frame rates up a bit more, uh, slightly reducing the PC latency. And then when you add in frame gen on top of that, we're now again getting even higher frame rates. It looks very, very smooth to play and the PC latency, um, again, is up compared to DLSS balanced. But I will say, I actually did, in addition to just running these benchmarks, I did just play the game. And playing the game at a PC latency of 50 to 60 milliseconds was completely playable. Honestly, the frame generation wasn't even the issue. My issue with this game is even just DLSS 2 uh, on certain uh, elements of the image, like the palm tree branches and certain straight lines in the pavement and things like that. There's some aliasing and breakup. So honestly, that was my main objection uh, to using DLSS here, uh, as opposed to any of the frame generation issues, actually. Now, going down to DLSS performance mode uh, actually pushes the frame rates pretty, uh, pretty high. We're not up to 60 FPS in the more demanding areas but it feels very, very playable. And then enabling frame generation on top of that, uh, you can see it has an extremely smooth image, which is what the generated frames are gonna do for you. And again, the PC latency uh, in the mid 40s, sometimes up into the 50s, but um, again, I did actually play the game at those settings and it felt very playable. My main objections to any of it was, like I said, it's actually more just the fact that running DLSS performance at 1440p is rendering a very low internal resolution. And it's honestly extremely impressive how well DLSS upscales that, but it still doesn't feel like a native, uh, the native resolution, especially in motion. Um, but overall, this was a very interesting way to play the game. And I actually recommend that if you have a GPU capable of doing this, like the 4070, that you at least play around with this. It's, it's pretty cool to see what path tracing's like. So what I want to show here before we leave the 1440p resolution is showing the 1440p native ultra on the left, so no RT overdrive. And on the right hand side, we're seeing the uh, RT overdrive with DLSS performance and frame generation. Now, unfortunately, the YouTube compression is really not gonna let you see how much softer and aliased the DLSS performance image is compared to the native image. 
Um, but I thought I'd at least show this, and you can also look at the average PC latency. So while the uh, right-hand side has a higher average frame rate, similar but higher average frame rate, notice the PC latency seems to be, you know, 15 to 20 milliseconds higher. Although, like I said, it actually felt very, very playable. I wouldn't want to play some kind of competitive uh, esports game at those settings. Um, but it was very playable. I went through some combat scenes, things like that. And it was certainly an interesting way to experience, uh, experience the game and play around with the new path tracing update. So uh, what we're looking at now is 1080p resolution. So on the left, you're seeing RT Overdrive running natively at 1080p. You can see it's almost getting us to 30 FPS, but it's not. <laughs> uh, by enabling DLSS quality, it actually boosts the frame rates uh, well over 50 FPS and is extremely playable. Uh, the average PC latency there is low enough that I feel like the hit by uh, for adding in frame generation is completely reasonable, boosting the smoothness of the image very considerably up to 100 FPS experience, and you know it looks like 100 FPS. Um, it feels like a lower resolution um, to the responsiveness, but honestly, the way the human brain works is by by having the smoother looking image, it can sometimes feel more responsive than the latency numbers show. Uh, anyway, I don't really like upscaling at 1080p, but this is a, a pretty um, pretty playable and usable experience if you want to try out the new RT Overdrive mode. Now, what we'll see here before we leave 1080p resolution is looking at the native 1080p Ultra versus on the right-hand side, the RT Overdrive mode using DLSS quality and frame generation. Notice that the native 1080p Ultra is running at a higher overall frame rate as well as a considerably lower PC latency. So it will feel, feel more responsive to play. Um, but again, it is fun to look at the new path tracing mode. So I'm not necessarily recommending that path tracing is the way that a new player to this game just completely play the game. I'm also not saying you shouldn't, um, but I am saying I, I do think um, it's cool to play around with, with this path tracing mode, uh, look at the lighting differences, all of that, because um, there is considerable differences between the two images. Um, you know, some scenes, I think, look night and day better. Well, one thing that's really nice, I think, is the way the uh, the characters' actual faces look. You can probably hear my kids running around upstairs. Sorry about that. Um, and things like that with, with the lighting. They feel a lot more grounded in the scene. Now, I thought we'd go ahead and test out 4K resolution before we're done with the video. And, oh my goodness. So, <laughs> on the left-hand side, you can see trying to run 4K RT Overdrive mode at native 4K, and you can see it's running so slow that it can't even match the other two scenes, although we started them in the same place. It's running at 7 FPS. By going all the way to DLSS Performance mode, uh, which renders at a internal resolution of 1080p, and then uses the uh, DLSS algorithm to try to reconstruct a 4K-like image. It certainly does not look as sharp, especially in motion, as a true 4K native image does. Um, but, you know, it does boost it to almost 30 FPS, and then kicking on frame generation gets the actual frame rate numbers and the smoothness of the image up into the mid-40s, uh, but the average PC latency gets up around 100 milliseconds, and I don't think it feels very good to play. So if you have too low of a base frame rate, I don't think frame generation works out very well, uh, which is definitely what we're seeing here. However, I thought the last thing that we'll show is um, at 4K resolution, what if we just looked at 4K Ultra with no RT overdrive native versus what we the most playable we were able to get, although I'd argue maybe turning off frame generation would actually be more playable because it had the lower latency and 100 milliseconds of latency. You know, you can use it, but it doesn't feel real great, especially in combat. Um, so yeah, 4K RT Overdrive DLSS performance uh, plus frame generation on the right-hand side. Now there is an ultra performance mode for the DLSS uh, upscaling, but it honestly, I don't really even like the look of the performance mode. So going, in, although it's very usable, uh, the ultra performance mode, uh, I just, things get way too grainy and flickery on textures and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so I didn't end up uh, testing that out in this video. 
Um, anyway, I think this is a very cool update to play around with, uh, and you know, some people might want this to be their preferred way to play the game, some people wouldn't, but it can certainly get you a playable experience.